Welcome to the Daily Devotional with Derek Nider. Thanks for joining us as he walks us through the pages of Scripture with a daily word of insight and encouragement. Well, it's great to be with you today in God's Word. I know you're probably wondering, man, where are we going to be at? You know, New Testament, Old Testament. Um, we're going to stay in the Old Testament. In fact, if you have your Bibles, you can op- open up to the book of Esther. Um, Esther is an amazing book. You know, it's a... Uh, And if you don't know where it's at, we got Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. So Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Uh, It is an amazing book. It is a, you know, you probably, if you grew up in church, of course you know the story about Esther, and you know, you probably had for you old folk, the flannel graphs, and you know, just to be able to remember, to recollect the the power of the story, and it translates so well. Uh, to especially to, to children, you know, but but to us as adults too. And um, it is a profound book, super exciting. There's so much that we learn about God in it, um, but it is also very mysterious. You know, it's it's a it's an interesting book for a number of reasons. Um, probably first and foremost, God and the name of God isn't ever even mentioned in Esther, and so. It's very extraordinary. It's the only book of the Bible that has this unique characteristic, um, but it has um, compelled some over the years to wonder whether it should even be included in the canon of Scripture. You know, you've got this book that is in the Bible and God's not even mentioned in it. And there are some reasons um, why we believe that that's the case that I'm going to be sharing with you. Uh, but the, the timing of this book is really important. We're talking about a hundred years after the Babylonian exile. So a hundred years after the children of Israel, uh, the children from Judah were sent into Babylon, um, exiled there by God. So a hundred years, you know, a hundred years has passed. And um, this book actually fits between chapters six and seven of the book of Ezra. So one reason why we're still in um, well, one reason why we're in Esther is because this book is uh, significant and important to all that God was doing in the lives of the Jewish people during a very significant period of time. Uh, like I said, the name of God is not mentioned, uh, but what we learn, and the, the beauty of that mystery is this, what we learn is that even though God is not mentioned, God is always at work behind the scenes. God is always engaged. God is always working. Um, even when uh, he's not being mentioned, even when, and it would seem, you know, because remember Jeremiah and Isaiah uh, prophetically were writing to the children of Israel who would eventually be in Babylonian exile, exhorting them them to come out of exile back to Jerusalem. And it would seem that um, there were a number of Jews, many Jews in fact, Uh, who just wanted to stay in exile. And so they were resistant to that command. Um, It's evident that many of them had been influenced by uh, the worship of false gods in not only Babylon, but some as we see, as we're just about to read, in Susa. Uh, And so there was uh, just a spiritual weakness, you know, a real lack of engagement in the things of God. There was no temple to make sacrifices in. So the people had really, really drifted spiritually from God. And and so some people would say, well, that's why, um, you know, it's it not only is the name of God not mentioned, um, but probably also why it's not even mentioned that Mordecai and, and Esther prayed. It's mentioned that there was fasting, but there wasn't, wasn't prayer. And so, you know, there seems to be a real shallowness to the spirituality of the Jews who were still living in exile. All of that to say, um, what we see here is just the powerful capacity of God to preserve his people, right? This uh, event, these events happen, like I said, uh, between chapter 6 and 7 of the book of Ezra. So Zerubbabel has come back. Ezra has... um, begun restoring the people in relationship to God. And then years later, Nehemiah is going to be directed by another king, Artaxerxes, to come back and to begin to rebuild the wall around Jerusalem, which sets off the um, prophetic time clock that we're so accustomed to. And so the Bible says in verse 1, chapter 1, Now in the days of Ahasuerus, the, uh, the Ahasuerus, 
who reigned from India to Ethiopia over 127 provinces. In those days when King Ahasuerus sat on his royal throne in Susa the citadel, in the third year of his reign, he gave a feast for all his officials and servants. So what rises to the top here, we're just going to talk about this for a second, is everything that's happening in the earthly realm, right? We're talking about kings and princes and politics and power. Um, and it's, you know, it's easy, I think, you know, it's natural for us in our lives just to have our eyes set on everything that's happening, like I said, in the earthly realm. It almost seems as if like all of that rises to the top in this book and God is minimized. You know, the, the focus on God shrinks in such a way. Um, and that's why what one thing I love about this book is it exposes that even though oftentimes our perspective is focused on what is happening in the earthly realm, in positions of power and authority, uh, what really is driving everything that we see with our physical eyes is God and his providence and sovereignty working out every single day in our lives. I, would, I wanna encourage you with that today because I think for sure we're in this moment where, man, we can so easily get consumed with what's happening in the news and, and we can get all wrapped up in what's happening in the lives of people who have power and authority and it dominates the news cycle and it dominates our attention. And, and pretty soon we're so focused on that, we forget that the, the, the most important thing that's happening isn't happening in the realm that we see, it's happening in the unseen realm. It's happening behind the scenes that God is in fact at work in all of the details. And one, you know, one uh, example of spiritual maturity is when someone is more focused on what's happening in the heavenly realm than what's happening in the earthly realm. May our attention and focus be settled there as we learn about the sovereignty of God. Father, we are so thankful that you're always at work and and God, um, I pray today that we would resist the temptation to be caught up in all things earthly, that we'd set our mind on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, and that we would trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day. We hope this podcast has ministered to you. If it has, we welcome you to rate it or leave a review. If you would like to stay connected with Pastor Derek Nider or find many more teachings, please visit awakenlv.org. Click visit and then choose Pastor Derek Nider. These links are also in this episode's description. Until next time, God bless you.